But you don't necessarily want to go to the library. Yeah, it does. But you can't see it because you're a student. So when you give it a reply on the link, does that automatically give you access to the. No, no, you. Yeah. You would have had to join with a code, I think. Yeah, make up that sorry, but yeah. Yeah, yeah. Maybe I joined late early enough. Yeah. Hey, um, well, it's eight o'clock, so audience of two. That's almost as good as I know, three or four. Hey, um, who had a crack with YouTube between now and last week? <coughs> Anyone? Oh, what, as a, pl as a playlist? As a... Okay, cool, cool. Well done, Francina, star student from last week. Hey, um, yeah, so today's about uh, Google Drawings. And so I think I'll take the same approach as last week. I'll just talk for probably... Uh, eight to ten minutes to show you some different examples and um, a quick bit of a how-to and then some time um, for you to yeah have a go have a go this was um it was a little bit of an epiphany, epiphany um, for me with Google drawings because at an earlier um, I oh, may we'll just go through those same slides we saw last week so you know deja vu you've already seen it we're all about vuja day you know doing something different so great to hear Francina had a crack at doing something different with YouTube between since last week. Um, yeah, and about this idea of consume versus um, create. You know, so I think there's a lot more mental load in creating something rather than just looking up something and reading it or reading a textbook or reading a worksheet or even reading a web page on screen. So this is a really useful tool for having um, kids create stuff. Um, yeah, and it's visual. So this was a slide from this nerd... Uh, conference I went up to in, in the holidays and this guy um, from the Maya Kalani cluster so that's a group of South Auckland schools starting with Point England and I guess they're the model of the community of schools so this guy works sort of full-time for this cluster of schools really awesome and he did a presentation on infographics and I just thought oh that's going to be a good one to roll out to the staff here so maybe I'll just copy his presentation and, and go through that and then when I started going through that yesterday I thought oh no actually um, I've used this program in a few different ways, so um, yeah, it's a little bit different. It's more than just infographics. So yeah, you know that idea of visual information can be a bit more powerful than than words. Um, I'll give you a quick sort of um, explanation of how I sort of started off on this. So um, last term, I gave a short workshop on personal learning networks. And I had this rather average diagram and it sort of bugged me a little bit because I thought, oh, I think I can do better than that. One thing that bugged me about it was that when I moved an element on it, all the arrows moved with it, you know, they sort of didn't stay attached. And then, you know, some of these icons, they weren't quite the same size and it was, it just sort of bugged me. And then actually going to this guy's workshop, just a few sort of three or four different techniques or tools and was able to make it, yeah, much flasher. Yeah, thanks for that gasp of amazement at how much better this is. Um, yeah, and so I found that it's, like most things, you take a bit more time or look a bit into it. You, th these things can be a little bit more powerful than, than what you first think. I just thought Google Drawings was quite a simple image editor drawings, but it, you know, it's not Photoshop, but you can certainly do some, some quite um, powerful things with it. So um, what can you do? or ways to use in class. Um, so you can use it as a word processor sort of desktop publisher and, and make some more um, good looking um, documents, you know, posters, even sort of revision notes. So in science, um, in, the, in the workbook, they've got a good sort of template for some revision notes at the end of each unit. So I put that template as a, as a drawing and, and so you can add a few more easily, you know, richer things in terms of pictures and formatting text and diagrams and all that type of thing. So, you know, making it, um, some revision notes hopefully a little bit more engaging. Um, found this on the web last night. So this is a lady um, who gave some really good tips on using Google Drawing. And so that's her CV, all done on Google Drawing. And hopefully you can see it's a little bit more visually appealing than just, say, a, 
um, a Word document, got some nice pretty colors, um, et cetera, et cetera. And, and on the original, these are actually links that, you know, hyperlinks that will actually go to um, various places. So you can use it for, for sort of more advanced publishing slash word processing. You can obviously use it for diagrams. So there's a couple that I've used in class. So we got to the end of last year, um, this one here, and, and asked the kids, well, you know, what, what, what are the inquiry weapons that you've gained over the years? So, you know, rather than just say, write a blog post, or I just thought, of, well, give this a crack. And it was interesting what the kids came up with. So you're quite visual, um, can't quite see it's full screen. He's got the crab knife of perseverance and the AK-47 of curiosity. And what's well, yeah, it's just a different, um, different task to do to achieve a, a similar learning outcome. Um, this one was again about science, so we were making these little steamboat billy um, uh, boats and um, just got the kids to sort of make an explanation of, of the science behind it. What was actually happening when you have these little steamboat billy boats um, cruise along in the, in the tank? And so one group, I didn't tell them to do a Google drawing, that, that's what they chose to do. So. Um, yeah, pretty good for diagrams. Feel free to stop me at any time if you want some further explanation. Oh yeah, this was a, a, an interesting one I thought, you know, using it like a whiteboard. So this is obviously a maths teacher and, and looking at sorting out shapes and terms. And so I guess you could see you could set this up as a drawing and, and as you're, you're teaching this particular task, you know, what, um, Johnny, which one do you think is the triangle? Or here's a triangle, which one do you think it, it belongs in? So sort of like an interactive whiteboard. Uh, brainstorm, obviously. Um, this one was about, I was interested in, in asking kids about their digital life. You know, I think we make an assumption that they, they live their lives digitally, and I was just interested in what the different devices they used and what they did with those devices in terms of action. So I made this um, as a copy where everyone could edit. Okay, so rather than an individual task, it's a, it's a class task. And in about 10 minutes, you know, those are the various ideas that we got. So a class brainstorm. Would you just, would you just share the link, Carol, if we were going to use that brainstorm, or would you chuck it up in the Google Classroom? Oh, yeah, either or. So in that case, um, I just put the, the link on Classroom, and I made the document anyone with the link can edit. And so they could all, all add to it. Um, Hyper document. So, you know, rather than just a diagram, it becomes a bit more um, next level because you can add links to it. So this is just a sort of a basic food web. And, you know, if you click on these links, it takes you to pages of information about that um, particular thing. So, uh, you know, I guess in that SAMR model of um, is it just replacing something you do on paper? Well, I think it's a little bit better because you can add that next level sort of functionality of, of going somewhere else when you, when you click on those hyperlinks. I, and it's yeah, it's a it's a pretty basic image editor as well. So there's a picture I took with a with a phone. You can add oh, I forget what the the desktop publishing term is. I think they're called masks. So there's all different shapes of masks. You can change color. Um, you can sort of pick up um, or draw. Sh so that this here is an attempt to sort of draw shapes around these different characters here and do sort of a a different version. So yeah, I mean it's not sh Photoshop, but certainly um, is potentially quite powerful and there's a link in the presentation for this guy who does some amazing things with Google Drawing in terms of textured um, images um, which you can look at later at your own leisure. And then yeah, infographics. So you know, different ways to pre present information, visually appealing. Um, and as I say at this nerd conference we spent a whole 50 minutes on looking at info infographics and how you make infographics and different tools and and tricks about that. Um, they're a little bit more next level, so I thought for this morning there's a couple of things you could have a crack at. So one is um, Google Classroom theme, and I'm going to go through that. Um, so if you want to, you know, watch a how-to, I'll do that on the big screen here. Um, if you don't want to watch that, you can you can go on with your with your own stuff. Second thing is a YouTube channel art. So you know, last week we did our YouTube channel. And you said you could, we said you could um, add the art for that. God, this took me a whole bunch of time last night because it was just very confusing about the size of the image. 
So there's the YouTube channel art. So you can you, you know make your own with Google Drawings. And what YouTube does is it it wants an image that's going to be that can show on a web page like this, or show on a mobile device, but will also show on a on a large screen TV. So the actual template you need is is a little bit confusing. Um, so if you're going to have a crack at that, um, I'll show you the the link. Sorry, if I get back to classroom. So the link to this channel art uh, it looks a, a little bit weird. So it needs to be this size, so that if you were looking at your YouTube channel on a big screen TV, but what most people will see is on the web page, and it, and it's in there. So if you're going to do your YouTube channel art, um, do um, put all your your design in, in this band here, and that's just the rectangle. You can you can delete that when you're finished. Um, and then the other thing here, just do something else, maybe a diagram or, or something else that you could use in your class. So, as I said, I'm going to go through the Google Classroom theme. So if you're going to follow along with me, go back into Classroom, and then there's that Google Classroom theme template. And I tried to be real flash where you'd click the link and it, and it makes a copy for you, but I'm not think, I don't think it's working. Has anyone clicked that link in Classroom and it's asked them, you, you know, would you like to make a copy? No, good, that was a bit of a failure. Um, so once you open it, just make your own copy, give it a name that makes sense, and I'm going to do this for the, uh, the classroom classroom. Alright, so again, this, I'm going to design this, so it's going to appear, um, oh, we can't quite see it on this view here. Yep. Again, you can just upload a photo. You take, I've seen Rob take a photo of his class and just upload that, but to have a crack at using Google Drawings, we're going to um, make this nice and pretty um, to upload there. So the first thing you can do is just draw some, some shapes. So there's the shapes menu, and I'm going to choose just to do some, some circles. So I'll draw some circles. If I hold down the shift key, it's going to make sure that it stays as a perfect circle. Um, if I just do it random, I can make ovals and whatever. So shift key can be quite useful in keeping shapes consistent. And again, we've got two colors here. We've got a line color and we've got a fill color. So there's the fill color. I can change that to a different color. I can change the line color to a different color. So go ahead and add some shapes. Um, to your document, and obviously you can copy and paste them. And for me, I'm going to just use this as a bit of a background. Don't know why I chose circles. So make a background with different shapes. Sorry if you're doing your own thing, no drama. Just see how long I need to go. Yeah, so if you go to file, make a copy. Just add in the shapes like that. <coughs> Yeah, yeah, so a whole bunch of different shapes to choose from. <laughs> so yeah, he'll play around with adding or changing the colour of those shapes. That actually that cyan colours just annoyed me a little bit. Might need to change the colour of that.
Probably should add a smiley face because we're all happy to be here. Um, all right, so I'll just uh, just go on. So that's shapes. Um, you can obviously add text. So just like most programs, there's a text box. Draw the text where you want it to appear. I'll just put in here for teachers. And then just like most other applications, you can edit that text. So I'm going to highlight it. And then I've got these um, text tools here. So you can change the font. So you've got a whole bunch of fonts you can choose from. Comic Sans, everyone loves that. Especially Daryl Boyd. Um, change the size of the font. Change the color. So you've got a whole bunch of different This one here in any box that you see, there's that little circle. That'll change the rotation. That's all that that means. So you can put it on a little lean if you want and it, it can take a bit of a while to get used to the, these different cursors so when it goes to those four arrows that means you can drag the option or the the, the, sh the yeah the object to somewhere different obviously on the corner you can change the size and then that one at the top there change the rotation um, I'll just quickly show you about layers so at the moment this text is on top of those two circles <laughs> For whatever reason, you might want to shape behind. So right click, and it's order. So I can send that backwards, and it's going to go behind that shape. So if you may imagine you've got this drawing with many layers on it, you can change what layer a particular shape is on. And if you're like me, you might have to click it a few different times to get the right one. So I actually want to bring that text to the front. So yeah, add some text. So you've got to make, this is just the template, you go to file, make a copy, and then you'll be able to see all those suggestions. So you've Does it when it comes up like a little question mark? Yeah, I'm not using it because it's getting annoying. <laughs> <laughs> but at least it's simple when you're teaching your languages. languages. All right, hey, I think most of you got some shapes and some text in there. So one of the last 
things is about images. So again, there's different ways to add images. There's the image button there, or there's the insert image. Um, oh no, I might show you the, a, a better trick than that. Um, so you know when I was doing that, I showed you that example of the revision notes for science, and I was dragging in those diagrams. So really useful is this research tool. So for example, if I was doing um, pH scale, so rather than me create my own drawing of the pH scale, um, I can filter the results instead of just Google, but images. And obviously that's going to bring me some images of a pH scale that you can just drag and drop on to your, um, to your drawing. And obviously then you can resize it, move it around. So that makes bringing in stuff really easy. So that's tools research. So it's Google images right in your drawing document. Easy way to get stuff in. And if you want to be a little bit more honest, this little drop down menu here, you can filter it by ones that you're actually allowed to use legitimately. So it does have a um, filter for royalty free or free to use Creative Commons type of licenses. So that's a useful way to get in other images or, or diagrams. If you've got your own images, like you've taken some photos in your class or you, you've just got them, so insert image and there's a range of different ways. You can upload an image, you can take a snapshot, um, which lets you use your camera, like that. Um, you can add an image by URL from your albums, these are your Google photo albums. Um, and there's even more ways. You can you can search for images. So it's got three image search engines built in, Google, Life, and Stock. So if I just do a teacher search, so there's some that are all um, free to use from Google. I can search the Life image database, and then or, or Photo Stock, I think that is. So there we go, teacher at a whiteboard, that's quite a a good one. Select it and then it will come into your drawing. Um, the last thing I'll just very quickly show you is image mask. So obviously you can resize the image, you can move it around, but let's say maybe I only want a picture of that whiteboard because that's the most important thing in that classroom. Um, there's a crop button, this one here. So you can crop the image in terms of, can you see how the outlines have now changed? So I can drag those in so that I only want to get that whiteboard because that's really important. So that's crop and that just gives you sort of a rectangle. What you can do, this little drop down menu here, is use a mask and that gives you all these shapes that you can put over the top of that image. So let's say you know we're, we're really in love with the whiteboard so we want to use the heart mask and so now we only see that picture of the, the whiteboard in the outline of a heart, and again we can change the line color of, of the outline, etc, etc. So inserting images, you can do it from the insert menu, you can do it from tools research if you want to find your own images, you can crop the images and you can add masks. So have a crack at adding some images, and you need some help. Just ask. So you, so you select the image, and this for me it's more it's about crop image, and you go to the drop down menu and that's the mask.
Right, so hopefully you've got a bunch of things on this drawing canvas. Just one more thing okay. before we can upload it. Um, so this was sort of the next level thing that I found. So you know with this little diagram I had how it really annoyed me how the icons were different sizes. Um, so this has got built-in alignment guides and also image sizes. So if I've got this blue um, circle here and I want it in line with that yellow circle, see how the red line is sort of changing as I bring it up and down? So it's showing me what that is aligned with, either left or right it's for a vertical line or um, right to left for a horizontal line. So that's one thing. Now if you want all the circles the same shape, drag on the corner and it's going to show you, see how that circle is now the same size as the, the yellow happy face? It's got those blue um, blue lines beside it. Yeah. So that tells me, without having to sort of get my ruler out on the screen, that those two shapes are now the same size. So let's say if I want to bring this one up to be the same size. So I found that really useful as well. So if you're a little bit concrete sequential like me, you can have all your images or shapes if, the same if you size. The arrows to the join points on there, will they attach when you move them? Yeah, so uh, good, good question, because that was another thing that annoyed me. Um, so if you're going to put some, let's say some arrows, so select the nine and I want an arrow, and let's say a brainstorm's a good one, you know, I want to connect that element to this one here. So um, by default, it, if I move this one, the line's not going to move with it. So that's what really annoyed me about this diagram here. Again, if I move something, it moved with it. Until I realized, you click on the arrow, and that blue dot, drag it to the object you want it to attach to, and get it onto one of the purple dots. And when it does that, it's now a dynamic link. Whichever one you move, they're going to stay joined and connected. So purple dots, um, that's going to keep things connected. Um, let's just give a couple more minutes if you want to do the last little bit of tutuing, and then we'll, um, I'll show you how to upload that to your classroom theme. Uh, no, I don't think so. So this one here, that's an image that I've dragged in from that research tools, and it just attaches the link to it. So I didn't, I didn't make that a, a hyperlink. Um, if you want to make something a hyperlink, click on the object in um, Command K to make it link to something else. <coughs> Oh yeah, yeah. So there, yeah. More so for text. Um, so if you're in a, I've used this in a document before. If you drag some text onto a document, it'll add a footnote after that, and that footnote could be either of these three yeah, formatting styles. At the bottom of the page, won't hit. Cause this is a drawing, so I haven't used it with drawings. I'm assuming it's just going to add it as a link to the object. So, but if you if you're in a document, it adds it as a footnote at the bottom of the page. Yeah. Um, all right. So hopefully you got something that um, is a little bit better than mine that you you may actually want to use for your classroom. Um, so you got to do a couple of steps. So one is you can't just go straight from a Google drawing into the into the classroom you've got to download the image. So file, download as, and I usually always choose the PNG. J, JPG or PNG, I think both will work, but I don't know, I have always used PNG. 
So that's now going to put that in your um, downloads folder or your desktop or wherever. And then it's just a case of going to your Google Classroom. And this is the, the, the classroom that I want to add this, this image to. Um, I'm going to upload a photo, even though it's not a photo. It's a, if you're using Chrome, you can actually just drag it from the bottom there. No, it's wanting me to open it. There you go, drag it from there to there. And um, I played around with about 12 different image sizes, and whichever one I use, it always seems to wanting to crop it. So this box here allows you to select which part of it. Select that, and then there is your new um, background. So it will change depending on the zoom of your window. So it's really frustrating because you, you know, like me, I've spent ages getting this perfect banner, and that's what I want it to look like on a student's um, device. But it's going to change whether they look at it on a tablet or a phone or a whatever screen size they're looking at. So um, yeah. The idea is you do a bigger image than what you'll need, and um, it'll zoom in and out. All right, yeah, so that's us for today. Look at that, right on 8.30. Thanks for your time this morning. More than happy to hang around, answer your questions. Enjoy your drawings. <laughs>